Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Daniel Choi here at North Texas Dental Surgery, Wisdom Teeth, and Denture Implant Center. I am a board certified periodontist since 2011, and over this few many years, I've seen many patients who were interested in dental implants or had dental implants. And many patients have many similar questions. And so what I've done is I've compiled a series of videos that basically go over a lot of the questions that patients have asked me in the past and trying to comprehensively answer a lot of these questions about you know prospectively getting dental implants or maybe they've had dental implants and they're having some issues and maybe they want to understand why so again over the last few months i've been compiling this series of videos that i've been you know really wanting to get out to the public so patients can really understand anything and everything about dental implants I'm super excited about this. I really believe that patients, if they truly understand the concepts in the video, that they will be able to be their um, own best advocate in the sense of knowing the best solutions for their mouth and also um, being able to save yourself some money. So that was the whole objective of these videos. So I really hope that you guys really can watch these videos and um, you know really educate yourselves and be able to get those you know beautiful results that you've always wanted whether it's that you know that confidence that beautiful smile that you've always wanted or to just be able to chew again or to just stop wasting money with um, previous dentistry that they've had and avoiding all that frustration so uh, please again feel free to watch these videos and if you like them please give me a thumbs up please follow us on instagram and facebook at north texas dental surgery we are more than happy to see you guys also as patients if you feel that you want to come in and ask us any questions all right, thanks and good luck to you in the future. All righty, let's get started. So in this video, we're gonna discuss dental implant sizing and 3D scans. All right, so the big question is, how do you save this and how do you avoid this? All right, so why watch this video? Again, I'm not trying to create clickbait to get people to just watch this video. If you're informed, you'll be able to ask the right questions and be able to get the right treatment and save money. Um, see many common themes in the past. Anybody would obviously try to save money, but I've seen some patients go the cheap route and get botched, as you just saw in the previous photos. Um, as a result, sometimes they have horrible aesthetic results, can't chew properly, have implants that fail later on, maybe have damage to nerves, etc. In the end, they end up spending more money um, to get it fixed. Um, dental implant treatment doesn't have to be expensive. The goal of my videos are to teach you insider information so you can come as close or as reasonably close to uh, as possible to diagnosing like a board certified periodontist. Um, what credibility do I have? I've been board certified since 2011, placed over 10,000 implants in my career. Uh, I placed dental implants for single teeth, implant bridges, denture implants, all on fours, which are teeth in a day. Um, also, I do normal bone grafting for socket preservations after extractions, more significant bone grafting like GBRs, ridge augmentations, sinus lifting, etc. And I perform gum surgeries for gum grafting, gum disease, um, because your gum health has, does have a huge impact on the overall dental implant health over the long haul. Um, so the previous video recap, um, if you haven't watched it, I would highly encourage you guys to watch that. Um, it is um, got some basics in there that are really fundamental to you guys understanding um, the following videos. But um, you want to place as long and wide of an implant as possible and how much bone you have determines how long and wide of an implant you can have. So for dental implants, um, let's assume you have all your teeth but you're about to replace one due to a fracture, huge cavity, trauma, failed root canal. Um, you would just assume based off of what we just discussed that we place as long and wide of an implant as possible. Um, but two common anatomical limitations that limit how long of an implant you can place are your sinuses and your inferior, inferior alveolar nerve. So when we're talking about dental implants in your upper jaw and your maxilla, your maxillary sinuses, which are basically air-filled cavities, um, well, let me go here. Your, your, your maxillary sinuses are in your upper jaw bones. They have air-filled cavities that are connected to your nasal passages. Well, the problem is that these big, and, and then the red arrows basically delineate where the, the sinuses are in your maxilla, your upper jaw bone. Um, but when we're placing a dental implant, um, you're, you don't want to be placing an implant up in air because it's not getting any support in there. If this is your bone and you're placing your implant screw up there and half of it's hanging out in there, you're not getting any support, right? Um, you want to bury your dental implant as deep as possible in your soft upper jawbone. Um, again, we learned in the video part one that your maxilla is typically softer, right, than your lower jawbone. Um, but if you have large sinuses, then you're placing your implant in air because it's a hollow cavity in your bone. Compare it to trying to secure three inches of a screw in the wall, but the drywall is only like one inches thick. 
And if that's the case, then you're gonna have two inches of your screw just hanging out in the air back there, right? So would you then feel comfortable hanging like something heavy on there, right? No, probably not. Why does this matter? Your implant can fail eventually if your implant isn't secured in enough bone. Also, what if somebody tells you that you need to add more bone, in this case via a sinus lift, and have to pay thousands of dollars more? You would be able to tell by looking at your CBCT scan, which is your 3D scan, and I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, so again, that's why this is important, right? Lower jaw bones, um, the inferior alveolar nerve is a major nerve that runs along your lower jaw. In the process of trying to place as long of an implant as possible, if your dentist drills into your nerve, you can suffer from permanent numbness of your nerve, which is then you'd have some numbness of your lip and chin area. Um, we can determine the distance of the nerve by again evaluating your CBCT scan, which is also called your 3D scan. We will discuss this more in the implant complications video, but you know, again, this is the, the white area delineates like that line you can see running along your jaw and that's actually your inferior alveolar nerve, right? And so when we're placing your dental implant, we wanna place as long and wide of an implant as possible, but some people, their anatomy differs, right? So if your nerve is running high up here and you're placing a long screw and you drill right into it, then you're gonna have some complications. So um, that's what we're gonna talk about this video. How do we size and how do we use the technology to help us figure that out? So dental implant sizes, just like screws, they come in different lengths, widths, shapes, and sizes. And as mentioned in the previous slide, we want to place as long and wide of an implant as possible, but we don't want to be in your sinus or your inferior alveolar nerve. How do we know ahead of time what size of an implant we can place? So the old way of placing dental implants, we used to make an incision in your gums to see how wide the bone is. And in order to see what length implant we use, we used to take a look at your 2D x-ray, just like you see right here, or in the previous scan, which is also a 2D x-ray, right? And we would um, start drilling, and then we'd take another x-ray and see how far this drill was from your sinuses or your inferior alveolar nerve. So placing dental implants had to rely on guessing and experience to see how far away the drill was from your sinuses and nerves. The problem is that with traditional x-rays, they can only give us a basic understanding of the height and width of a space where you wanted to place an implant. Traditional x-rays couldn't tell us anything about the thickness of your bone. So we would be prepared for your surgery, open up your gums, realize the bone was too narrow and change our game plan to place a narrower implant than anticipated, or realize suddenly um, we had to do bone grafting um, or not even be able to place an implant because the bone was too narrow. So that was a reality, you know, back when I was in residency from 2008 to 11, that's what I saw, you know? So sometimes I remember cases where you know, we basically try to feel the, the gums and maybe anticipate how wide the, or thick the bone was. And then you, you open up the gums and realize that the gums were really thick and that the bone was really thin and there was, we couldn't place the implant. We just had to do bone grafting at that time. So some people may say, can't you tell the thickness of bone by just looking in the mouth? Well, again, what I was just saying, not really. What if, um, to give you an example, I was wearing a really puffy winter coat but I'm actually skinny, right? Similarly, I mean, like if I'm all zipped up, nobody would be able to tell me how skinny or thick I was, right? So similarly, you can have very thick gums and very skinny bone, right? Um, so the CBCT, the 3D scan, tells us the exact measurements of your bone without having to guess. So the CBCT scan, the 3D scan, what is it and why do we need it? Well, traditional x-rays at an office are two-dimensional. The CBCT scan is a 3D scan that allows you to not only see the height and the width that we can on the 2D scan, but also the depth, right? The thickness, which tells us the thickness of the bone. Um, I won't place an implant without your CBCT scan. I've literally placed 10,000 implants and still feel uneasy about placing an implant without it. Now, again, in residency, we didn't have access to a CBCT scan in 2008, 2011. And so didn't really start regularly using CBCT scans until a few years in my practice. But the ways that I had to do it back in the day was this traditional way, the old way, just having to rely on experience and, you know, drilling a little bit, taking an x-ray, drilling a little bit more, taking an x-ray. But, you know, that again right now is just a far inferior way of placing dental implants. So as discussed in the last video, everybody's bone has different dimensions and shapes. We can see your dimensions and plan the surgery accordingly to get you the proper size implant without having to be invasive and going in, numbing you up, pulling your gums off and seeing how thick, you know, what the bone dimensions were. This also helps us to avoid hitting any vital structures like your nerves, which we talked about the inferior alveolar nerve, because we know the exact dimensions of everything before your surgery. It helps you to also know upfront of any additional work is needed, um, like extra bone grafting, and this helps you to be financially be prepared um, because you want to basically know the cost of 
getting the actual surgery, any necessary bone grafting, the abutment and crown. Uh, on top of that, you want, um, before you venture into something that's gonna be a few thousand dollars, I'm sure everybody wants to know, be prepared and have as much diagnostic information as possible. So um, dental implant size is summary. So we want to place as wide of an implant and as long of an implant as possible, right? We discussed that in the first video. However, we want to make sure we obviously don't drill too long that we hit into your inferior alveolar nerve. Again, you don't want to be numb. There's nothing wrong with placing too long of an implant in your maxillary sinus, but you're not going to get any, any support from the implant being in there. So again, if you only had five millimeters of bone and then another five millimeters in air, you're not getting any support from the air, right? So dental implant size is a mistake. All right, so this is um, actually where most dentists screw up when placing implants. So obviously hitting your inferior alveolar nerve would be a big blunder, but where most dentists screw up is by placing too wide of an implant in the available space. So, so we want to place as long of an implant to get that support, right? And then another way that they're gonna to try to compensate for getting more surface area, the bone implant contact that we talked about in video number one, is that they're gonna to try to use a wider implant. But this can be, um, cause a whole host of issues, like aesthetic issues that we see in this case. Um, this surgeon placed too wide of an implant for the space, right? Um, there wasn't enough thickness of bone, uh, went a little too deep, and so the bone followed it and the gums followed it. And I'll talk about more of this in more detail. You guys probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But my, like, you know, what I'm trying to get at is all my content is being driven towards how do we avoid cases like this, right? So very important. Um, one thing that would have really helped this lady was um, you want to have at least two millimeters of bone surrounding the outer edge which is the buckle, which is buckle refers to cheek, right? So buckle or facial edge is what we call it in dentistry, like our technical terms. And so you wanna have at least two millimeters of bone out here and um, on, also on the tongue side, which we call the lingual or on the roof of the mouth, we call, it, we call the palatal. So I know this is like a lot of technical terms that you don't need to know, but long story short, on the outer edge on, on the inside edge, you wanna have at least two millimeters of bone. And that's gonna give you, um, it's gonna be very crucial for you to have that so that you don't lose future bone in the, you know, bone in the future that's gonna cause aesthetic issues and even potentially cause implant failure. If you don't have that two millimeters, what we see later on is that the thin bone will tend to get thinner and then die off, okay? So if you look at this case, I know you guys are like, what the heck am I looking at? Well, just know that this outside edge is the cheek side and then this side is the roof of the mouth, okay? The lower tooth is down here. And so when they place this implant, again, this is the cheek side, they didn't bury this implant within the bone. This is the bone right here. So the implant should have been more like here, okay? So that they were able to maintain that two millimeters of bone. So whoever places this implant, you know, this is a horrible implant. This is maybe a horrible ex you know, excuse, I mean, uh, just an example, but um, whoever places this implant, um, at, uh, they place it at the wrong angulation and therefore there's not enough bone around the outer edge, right? So this is, this is a huge blunder, right? Um, so dental implant sizes, if the bone thins out, then the gums will start following the bone and you will start to see inflammation of the gums, then eventual recession of the gums, and then you'll be able to see the implants right here, right? So I'll discuss this later in the implant complications video, but needless to say, this is like a bad problem, right? So just to reiterate kind of like what I'm talking about, like if you don't have that two millimeters of thickness of bone, what tends to happen is that the bone will then thin out. It's like it starts dying off. And then the gum start like the bone starts like coming down. Okay. So the bone will like literally start like falling lower on the implant. Okay. Well, if the bone starts falling lower on the implant, then the gums will start falling lower on the implant. And I use this analogy. It's like, imagine a tent pole, right? Um, you know, a tent is going to support the fabric on top, which keeps the shape of the tent. If I was to reduce the, like the, the tent pole by one half the, the size, right? The length, then the tent pole is obviously going to fall out lower, right? So you want to make sure you do everything you, you can to maintain that bone on that outer edge of that implant. That two millimeters of thickness is absolutely crucial, okay? Therefore, the bone won't start receding and then the, go the gums won't start receding. Because if you start having chronically exposed titanium implants, then the bacteria is going to start settling into the titanium pores and further exacerbate the situation called periimplantitis. And I'll talk about that in a future video, the complications video. So these potential big issues can be prevented with proper planning with CVCT scan technology and following certain principles, such as maintaining the two millimeters of buccal bone or palatal or lingual bone thickness. Again, the palatal or the lingual bone are on the, the roof of the mouth side and on the tongue side. So what if you don't have enough of this bone thickness? 
you don't like most people are gonna be like, well, I'm just gonna use a smaller size implant. Well, if you use a smaller size implant, what could end up happening is that the implant is too small, it doesn't have enough bone implant contact, which is gonna allow it to be able to sustain, sustain the forces of me chewing every day or clenching and grinding our teeth, okay? So you don't wanna comp compromise by using too narrow or too short of an implant. Remember from an earlier video that if we use too short of an or narrow of an implant, we will lack enough bone implant contact. So if you're chewing hard foods or you're a grinder or a clencher, then your implants can fracture or become loose and fail. So I've literally seen two cases of this um, in the last like month alone. Um, some guy had an implant placed, um, and I'll create a separate video about this, um, uh, by a surgeon in a different city. Implant lasted about five years. And looking at the implant, it, it didn't make any damn sense to me because the size and length of the implant, the width and the length uh, of the implant, considering how much bone this guy had when looking at his CT scan, they could have used twice as long of an implant and they could have used literally like an, an implant that was another 75% wider, right? So, um, you know, how this happened, I have no idea. The, the, patient, the, the, the doctor just used way too small of an implant and therefore the implant became overloaded and failed. Some dentists argue that you can't, you can get away um, with using short, narrow, uh, short implants for narrow implants. And, you know, in what I've seen, yeah, some cases this may be true. However, you increase your odds of implant failure if you also clench or grind. So, you know, clenching and grinding, there's estimates that 80% of the population clench or grind, but most know, don't know that they do it. And again, this is unpredictable if you don't know if you're clenching or grinding. As a result, it's best to be prepared to have the longest and widest implant as possible but without violating the principles that we just, just talked about, about the two millimeters of thickness, right? So, you know, maybe you can get away with using a short or a narrow implant, but again, you're spending thousands of dollars in something, you know, can I get away with placing a mailbox post a foot in the ground? But why would I bother? Like, I'm gonna go as deep as I can to give it as much support as I possibly can. So in summary in this video, we want to place as long and wide of an implant as possible in a site but make sure we don't damage any vital structures and have at least two millimeters of bone surrounding the implant on the outer edge, which again, we call the buckle or the facial side. If you don't have enough bone thickness, the bone can start dying off and receding and the gums will follow and this will cause aesthetic issues and even the implant could eventually fall out. The CBCT, which is a 3D scan, helps us determine the optimal size of a dental implant for each site on every patient before the surgery, and that's gonna really help us plan your surgery properly. If you try to place too skinny or short of an implant because you're trying to avoid nerves or you're trying to maintain two millimeters of buckle thickness, bone thickness around the implant, then the implant can break or succumb to the pressure and eventually fail. So hopefully that information was very helpful. Um, in our next video, we're gonna be talking about bone grafting. And bone grafting, this is a very important topic because how do we again make sure that everybody has the ideal implant size and the ideal bone around it? And bone grafting is a very complex topic because there's different types of bone grafting, cost, invasiveness, healing times, etc. So hopefully we'll see you on the next video. All right, thanks.